This is now my fifth attempt to try and show you guys the LEDs on this system, but it's incredibly tough. So I'm just slamming it here on the intro to the video real quick. Because of the way this thing is bent on the sides with that kind of curved alien Starcraft kind of design there, it makes the LEDs, if you capture them at the right angle, look absolutely enormous. You can see them cutting through. It is literally just coming from the front, but because of the angles of that chassis, it makes it look like it's going from all sides. And if we flick over to the RGB uh, turbo mode there, we then get different colors to play with, which can then fade in and out. And there's a couple of effects, but ultimately the RJ, uh, sorry, the LEDs on the front of this system, still pretty colorful. And you can see it going all the way from the front there. But for some reason, the white one for me is just the one that looks absolutely crazy lightsaber-tastic. Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about a new switch. Now the word new, let's be relative about this. This is not new. This is something I wanted to get for this office. At the moment, uh, you know, during a lot of our videos, we're seeing a lot more 2.5 GBE. We're using a lot of Wi-Fi 6 stuff, some crossover. And I was looking at my own personal setup. I had like a little Netgear PoE switch just out of shop there I've got for some cameras. I've got another one just around the back there, a Netgear. And I've got a QNAP one that sort of ties it all together along with my backup. But at the moment, what I needed to get, because all the NASs at the moment are rocking out 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and I've got a new router that's 2.5G, I needed a new switch. And I spent quite a bit of time I'm looking, I hate seagulls, at 2.5 gigabit Ethernet switches. So the reason I wanted to make a review about this, other than obviously the fact that I've bought a new shiny thing that I like, um, I want to talk about this because this to me is a switch that regardless of me looking around, no one was talking about. Regardless of the fact that it's won awards, it's got that red dot 2021 winner thing there, much like you get the design awards of things. And although it's not the cheapest switch out there, I thought it worthy to talk about. Not just because of the product itself, but the kind of way networking is going forward. So this is the D-Link DMS D106XT. It is a combined 10 gigabit Ethernet and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet switch. Now that, to me, got my attention. It's not the only one out there, and I'll be frank, I narrowed this down between this and the QNAP switch. Now, the reason I ended up opting for this is due to two things that I'm gonna talk about later in the video. But right now, if you're in the market to buy a new switch, you know, like you would get an extension lead for a plug point on the wall and you need a few more ports to play with. There's certain bells and whistles you're looking at, but if you're looking at a standard class, five to 10 port, one gigabit ethernet switch, you can pick those up unmanaged for about 25, 30 quid. Unmanaged means that everything's hard coded. You can't really muck around with the settings, but it has switching capacity. Each port has that one GBE port in the case of a one gig Ethernet switch, but you can't really control it. There isn't really quality of service where one port has priority over another. There's preset things, sometimes anti-loop detection and stuff like that. Unmanaged has got better over the last few years, but unmanaged is largely brainless. Now, if you're looking at 2.5 gigabit Ethernet switches, despite the fact that most NAS devices are starting to arrive with 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports on the rear at the same price as 1 GBE ports, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet switches aren't sharing the same parity, and much like the bandwidth capacity, are knocking around for two and a half to sometimes even three or four times the price due to things like rarity, newness on the industry, and also because of the larger switching capacity needing better internal components. So most 2.5 GBE switches that are five to eight ports, and there's about eight or nine good contenders in the market. Um, there's ones like uh, the QNAP one they rolled out there, the 1105T, which is a five port switch. And that knocked around for about 80 to 100 pounds, depending on where you shopped. There's an Ace Storm model out there that I've talked about. And again, that knocks around for a not dissimilar price. Um, but that is pretty much what you're paying. And you're going suddenly from 25 to, 50, uh, 25 to 30 quid, right the way up to 80 to 100 to this big jump. So a number of users then look at that and go, well, if I'm spending that kind of money, I'm going 10 gigabit ethernet. So if you try and go for a 10 gigabit ethernet switch, and I know this is a long intro, but if you try and go for a 10 gigabit ethernet switch of five to eight ports, 
then you're looking at two, 250, 300, even unmanaged, if you want all the ports to be copper and 10G. So the, the, the way to get around all of this is um, combo uh, switches, and switches that have got combinations of different ports, so be they combo ports that are shared, or this is a device that will have some of certain kinds of ports. Generally, you find at the moment that you get a 10 GBE port and a bunch of ones, or you get 2.5 GBE and 1 GBE combined. There aren't a lot of switches in the market that have got 10 gigabit Ethernet and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on that switch. And this is one of the few that does. QNAP have got one. There's one Netgear one that's really odd and weirdly overpriced at £449. And there's this bad boy for 130 Netgear, just slicing down the middle there. This switch, although unmanaged, has a 10 GBE port and five 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. But even though it's unmanaged, it also has an element of quality of service control, which I'll get onto in a moment. But this long, long, long intro aside, let's unbox this device and then carry on talking about the hardware afterwards. So look at the box, really, really shiny. They've gone the Gamer LED route. And that's because most gaming rigs now and gaming routers are sporting 2.5 gigabit Ethernet there. And there's also some 10G stuff floating around too, so you can kind of see the argument behind it. Now, if we open it up, remove that there. Again, they talk a lot about the LEDs, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I know I'm in a minority. Um, inside, we can open this up. We've got ourselves a security seal. This arrived um, midway through filming uh, one of our Data News of the Week videos. If you did watch that video and heard the alarm in the background, that was what that was. Um, but there is our box there, really, really dull. And inside, we've got our metal plated switch. Now, the metal design is something I'm also looking forward to talking to you guys about because of, obviously, heat dissipation. But that is our switch. We'll get onto that in just a moment. Inside, well, we've got our external PSU. And again, because this is 10G and 2.5 GBE, although it's not power over Ethernet, which I know will disappoint some people, um, it is still quite a modest PSU there external. There's nothing inside there to generate heat. There's no internal fans, and the system arrives with different connectors for different regions. There's also information on the two years of warranty and information on the quick start installation. Also information there on how to set up your LED uh, control changes there. You may also notice looking at the diagram, and I know the light makes it a little bit tough there, but you can see there's little lines coming off the diagram of the router there, pointing towards different devices. And we'll get to why that is in just a moment. But that's really it, that's all you get inside your device. Put that off the table and have a good look at our switch. So that is what this device looks like. It's gone for this very kind of um, cyberpunk, modern-esque, kind of slanted design there. There's absolutely no way that wasn't intentional to aim at the gamer there. Uh, we've got the LEDs there. No written text anywhere on the front of the device there. Just those LEDs and it's kind of, you should know what these do. The LED light is all the way around this device. Um, well, it shines because of the reflection, but it's just there on the front where the actual LEDs are. And again, RGB, you can alter that uh, very, very easily via the software. Um, on top of that, we can look at the ports. Now, as mentioned, we have got a 10 gigabit ethernet port there, and again, copper 10G base T, and we've got a bunch of 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports there. Now, what's really intriguing about these is when you are utilizing most switches that use 10 GBE and other ports there, the switching capacity is generally lower. Do you find ones where if you really translate it and break down what the unmanaged switching capacity is, you're not actually getting the full output of this. So I was slightly concerned that this 10 GBE and those 2.5s were being made available kind of on the assumption that you wouldn't have the ability to use all of them at full. But it does have a 45 uh, gigabit Ethernet sw uh, gigabit switching capacity, which means that's not really a concern. Also, we've got our power button there on the back there for the LEDs and turning the device or powering it down if you hold it. Um, We've also got the fact the entire chassis is metal, and that's of course to do uh, to facilitate heat dissipation, particularly for the 10 GBE ports. But even if the rest of these aren't 10G, they're going to generate some heat. Now, 
That heat dissipation there, because of a lack of fan, it means it's gonna operate in silence, but it's almost certainly gonna get just that little bit warm. Not from the LEDs, they're not really gonna be any kind of heat consistent issue there, but that dissipation there is gonna get quite warm. And of course, these devices, when they get too warm, it means they lose efficiency, the ability to do their job. So if you are gonna deploy this, despite that great amount of heat dissipation, you're gonna want this to be in a nice open air uh, situation. You're probably gonna see it here in the background of the videos with the LEDs turned off, obviously too distracting. But the thing I wanna draw your attention to is that little switch there next to the power button, that turbo button. That little turbo button, turn it on and boom, it's in turbo mode. Now, let's be honest with each other. Turbo mode sounds a bit sales wanky, doesn't it? It's not great. It's Even when you go to the website, it doesn't fully articulate what it does. It kind of half says it in a few diagrams, but you have to dig a little bit to really find out what turbo mode is. And what really annoys me is I think a lot more people would be interested if they were a lot louder about what true, uh, turbo mode is. What turbo mode is, is fixed priority of service protocols. If you buy an unmanaged switch, you don't have priority of service. An unmanaged switch normally means that all of the ports, if you're first, if you're interacting with the bandwidth first, you've kind of got it. And in some switches case, it partitions and makes sure that it all gets divvied out and divides it as more devices connect with no one device getting priority. But if you're using things like VoIP, if you're using things like um, even you know streaming services, IPTV or surveillance purposes, or you're connecting to a NAS and you're backing up multiple devices to a 10 gigabit Ethernet NAS, some of those ports are going to have to be a priority. So that's one of the reasons among a couple of things like port trunking that makes people spend a big old chunk more money and go for a managed switch to have that customization and ability. But if all you wanted was priority of service, which is what I want, and what I wanted in a switch for my video, so I could make sure that the devices that were connected to this were some of the videos I was going to make were still going to be a priority, that turbo mode has your back. Because what it does is upon flicking that switch, it applies preset priority of service on some of these ports. So by flicking that switch, ports one and six, so that port there and the 10GBE port become the highest priority ports automatically. They are the priority. It means that if looking at my notes there, port two is secondary priority there. So, you know, that's your amber. And the rest of the ports become the lowest priority on your network. That one little switch manages to turn an unmanaged switch into a switch that can provide that priority of service in a defined rigid way. It's not flexible, God no, but it at least presents the ability to select ports at the, at the flick of a switch. And if you are gonna run a priority of service operation from time to time, and you're gonna to want to know that a certain device has all of the bandwidth it's gonna need, having that little switch on an unmanaged device I think, and particularly given the price tag, remember it was 130 notes for this, a 10 GBE and 2.5 GBE switch, when, as mentioned, five port 2.5 GBE switches on the market at, you know, five to eight ports are arriving at 80 to 100, even 120 pounds, 130 for combined on that, and that turbo there, and the metal chassis design, I just fell in love with it. Okay, so this is pretty much my fifth or sixth attempt now to try and record this thing's light settings. As you can see, look at it. Look how shiny. And now when we've got the light a little bit darker, we can have a little look at those effects. So as you can see, the reflection on it is incredible. And if we switch over to the turbo mode, now we can go to the multicolor spectrum there. Now again, these settings can be changed. We can even have a bit of a rave if we choose by waving the device around. And we've got a switch there on the back that will change the frequency of a lot of those connections. You've also got the lights there on the top. And for now, if we leave that just nice and clear there in the middle of the table, we can see that kind of slow fade in and out of that light. And again, we can turn it off if we choose, or we can reactivate it there and go for the brighter settings. Again, as you can see, the reflection, thanks to those bends on the sides of the chassis there, make the light particularly bright as it reflects off all of the surfaces there. Now, 
again, not everyone is going to use the LEDs on this system, but it's still nice to know they're there, particularly for the gamers who seem to love this RGB stuff. I'm really not one of them. But again, let's flick that back to the non-turbo mode. We can see that if anything, the white is absolutely luminescent. And again, thanks to the curves on that chassis there, that is still an incredibly bright system there. And just don't forget that the top of this system will have a series of blue LEDs right here on the top when the system's in operation to denote each of those LAN ports on the rear of the device, the 10 and the 2.5G. You can't really ignore the brightness as it reflects off the table and look at just the way that shines sideways. Again, it's not really doing it justice here in the studio because it's really hard to film LEDs in this manner, you know, on a, uh, the camera that we're using today. But still, even if we move it to the side, you can see that there's no light on the side. It's literally just the front. Let's make our way back to the hardware review. So although this review is of a product that's been reviewed on a bunch of other platforms and websites already, and therefore you probably already know about it, I wanted you guys to know why I got this and why it deserves to be a bigger deal than it is. Now, based on this video, I might do some dedicated stuff on this, but again, as mentioned, this was mainly for the office. It wasn't really for any kind of dedicated review for NAS Compares, but if you guys want to hear more, let me know in the comments. If I had to summarize, what do I like? I like the turbo mode. I like combined 2.5 and 10 GBE at this price tag. I like the design of it. It's discreet, it's low, it's metal for dissipation. What do I not like? Not a lot, to be honest, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it. But unconventional design, it's not really going to be for everyone. But again, it is for me. And if I had to really think, maybe some people aren't going to like that it's not PoE for their cameras. But again, very specific users are going to think that. But otherwise, this has been a review of D-Link's 2.5 and 10 GBE 106 XT Switch. I recommend you check it out. But otherwise, you can look out for it in the rest of the videos in 2022. Thank you so much for watching. Click subscribe if you enjoyed it. Click like if you want to learn more. Use the free advice section over on NAS Compares. And otherwise, I will see you next time.